guys so this video is going to share with you guys 10 tips on renovating your bathroom so for us we have two bathrooms so this is our common bathroom here and we have um, our master bathroom so the first tip is very important for you to find a reliable ID or contractor to handle your bathroom renovation so to start looking for an ID or contractor some of you guys might get recommendation from friends or families or most of us will actually go online, so be it social media or looking at renovation website. So our recommendation is for you to check out Home Trust. So Home Trust is Singapore trusted review website whereby they offer advice and feedback on renovation. So you can check out their website. So there's hundreds of reviews though from homeowners that have did their renovation. So these are like authentic reviews. And I feel that for first-time homeowners, it's very useful because you know, there is a list of interior designers. So you can run through the list you know, and very important is to read the reviews. And if you're looking for like inspirations, you know, like how to go about renovating or your preferred style, they have like a list of like projects and ideas for you to run through, photo inspiration for you to do your mood board, and even articles and guides. And they also have this feature you know, whereby you can actually key in like your house type so be it like it's a HDB, condo or even landed and then your budget and as well as your preferred style so be it you're looking for an ID that actually do modern, minimalistic so we can just keep all this input and you can actually search you know for like an interior designer that is suitable for you so guys go and check out Home Trust um, especially if you're a first time owner I think this is a very good platform you know to get things started with so next up is for you to understand the purpose of your bathroom so if you have two bathrooms like us so you have to decide you know how you plan to use them are they going to be different or the same so besides like the usual um purpose of like showering and stuff you know we do see homeowners converting their bathroom into like laundry room or even like powder room so i mean there's a lot of ways you can play around with it so we use this master bathroom for our bathing or uh, like showering purposes and we also use the master bedroom to store some of our items like you know our contact lens solution and etc and for our common bathroom uh, we use it to store a lot of our cleaning supply so all of them are here and this area here we use it for a lot of cleaning purposes so like for example to wash our dirty rags and um to do some of the laundry and oh, we also water our plant here yeah but even so uh, we still install a shower here because it's important for you to plan long term to future proof your house so even though we actually don't bathe here right now but you know maybe like five or ten years down the road like uh, there might be new family members so this is still very important for us and next up it's highly recommended to, for you to separate your dry and wet area so be it with like a shower screen like this or with shower curtains and also using shower cups so on our end we definitely recommend shower screen more than shower curtain because uh, our shower curtain is not as effective uh, to prevent water from splashing out so for our case we actually got this like a uh, partial shower screen it's not a fully enclosed one but for this you have to take note that uh, water do get splashed out like uh, some of the water yeah because this is not fully enclosed but we are cool with it because uh, we prefer to have this open up uh, because actually our toilet is not very big and then there is a door right here so if there is another door um, we are like there might be too many things going on and if you are looking for a casement door right then you need to actually plan for to have the space for it to open up so you can't be putting like a tower right here for example and then if you are looking for sliding door uh, that could be done so that we need to actually have the what the kind of the tracks over here this one in our common bathroom is also a partial one like it's not a fully enclosed uh, shower area and this is great for us because like what we mentioned you know we do our washing here so we need to have this space here and coming to the fourth tip will be this um, built-in ledges that we have here so these are used to put our soap and shampoo so we actually got this uh, inspiration from online uh, from some of the homeowners on Instagram and then we saw this and we were like it looks really useful as you can see they are really very thick and they are really very sturdy and uh, of course they are you know built in so as compared to like getting those like you know rag those stainless steel ones like you might afraid that if it's too heavy they will drop or you'll get rusty over time but 
this is really good and for the size of it um, definitely you can actually measure and then even the height like where do you want to put it so for us we have two of it so we actually measure the height and we tell it to our ID to get our contractor to fix them up. So this brings us to our fifth tip which is the placement of your bathroom accessories uh, which includes the position as well as the height. So this is our tower rack that we have in our master bathroom. So we put one right here. So it's inside our shower area but it's super safe. So when we bathe right, the water will lightly splatter until like this session. So this is very safe and doesn't get wet at all so we put one here and the height of it you also have to decide you know like what is good uh, for your height you know to reach it so we actually measure it and what we do is that actually we place a masking tape here to tell them that we want to install at this particular height so same goes for this uh toilet paper holder so like the height and like the position and as well as this uh Bidet or Biden. Okay. So this spray right here. So some of you guys are very particular whether you want it on the right side or left side. So to us, we just choose the convenient side for us. So this one is on our left. And same for our common bathroom. So in fact, this one is very useful for us to put it here because we actually use it to spray this area. So if you think about it, if this is at the other side, um, it will not have been that uh, efficient. So here's another bonus tip for you guys. So we recommend to get a towel rack like this uh, that you can actually put items over the top instead of just getting a single bar uh, because it's more convenient you can put like your clean clothes or like another clean towel for example coming to our next tip uh, is regarding this shower drain so i'm sure you guys are familiar with like the traditional kind of drain like the one right here yeah so uh, what we actually did is that uh, we actually got this um i wouldn't say it's concealed because you can actually open this up yeah, but this is like, um, I don't know, upgraded version of a shower drain. So you can actually open up using your hands, but it's not as easy, which is good because it doesn't move around much. So what we did is that we actually got this uh, knife here, but we labor it lah, so we don't use it for like eating purposes. <laughs> yeah, so we just have to do this and wait a minute, just get it up. Yeah, and it looks something like that inside. Um, so it's all covered up nicely so you really have to work with your id to make sure that all these things are well done yeah and then there will be hair that will be trapped here so you do have to remove them you know like once a week but one good thing is that uh, if you do this style right uh, from the outside it looks it doesn't look as bad as like the traditional shower drain yeah so for us we recommend to go with this but it doesn't mean that you don't have to clean it you still have to open this up regularly you know to clear the stuff inside and next up is to plan for your washing basin and your tap so this is very important especially if you're working with your id and contractor to do like a uh, built-in cabinets if you are getting like an off shower one or like a standing basin then that's fine but if you are getting something like this then you need to work with your ID to actually tell them the size of your basin beforehand. So as you can see in our master bathroom, uh, we got a much bigger basin, uh, bigger than the one in our common bathroom. So we actually told this to our ID and we did the measurement. So to actually accommodate the size of the basin, right, uh, we need to at least to have the countertop until here. But uh, if we were to do it here and it's straight out, um, it will actually exit the door area which cuts into our door frame which is not possible so actually we did this like a uh, slanted cabinet yeah which works well yeah so this side of the cabinet uh, is actually slanted so for this tab uh, we were given two options on how one to install it so one is to have it at the back uh, like the usual way but honestly it's pretty squeezy here and to do so we need to move the basin slightly out a little then another option is to have it at the side so we actually think about it and we are actually cool with this orientation so we decided to have it here and then we communicate this to our id and our carpenter and uh, so what they did that they actually did the, they had to drill a hole here through our pots table and our carpentry yeah so this had to be communicated earlier if not they will have drilled the hole over here instead 
So next up is regarding the cilians. So which are like the silicone cilians here. So these are like chemicals that help to fill up the gap in between like uh, the different joints and like the space. So it's very important in like bathroom because it's a very moist area. So you don't want like water to sit in and then cause like moldy issue or anything. So it's very important to check like all these cilians are actually properly applied. And including areas like this, you know, you have to make sure that all the gaps are being sealed up. So for the sink, um, initially we wanted the contractor to actually apply it here as well. Uh, but he told us that he has already applied it on the underside of the sink, like uh, from the cabinet or uh, when he installed the sink. Yeah, and I, I also feel that maybe it's not um, appropriate to apply it everywhere. Like uh, for example, for our tap here, uh, we actually didn't get any uh, silicone sealer because in case that we actually need to replace this next time, it will be more convenient. And next up, we have our toilet door. So the one right here is uh, actually called a swing slide door. So we didn't opt for the one that uh, HDB has, so we have to get our own doors. So our recommendation for you is to really go for this kind of door because it really helps to maximize the space because one of another option that you can do is actually the, those usual uh, casement wooden door. Uh, those looks good but then it will take up a lot of space. So can you imagine that um, this whole portion will be actually your casement door. Yeah, it will be until like here and then the angle will be really huge. So for a swing slide door, it's much more compact. So you just have to swing it right here and then you can close it up. So if you take a closer look, right? Uh, this is actually our swing slide door from a uh, PD door. Yeah, and then we directly actually install it on top of our original HTB door frame. So this is from HTB. So what you can do is you, uh, you can actually hack this away and install it directly on the wall. But uh, because we actually decide on our door pretty late in the renovation, so we have already um, overlaid our wall tiles. So if we will still have to hack this, right, um, it will damage our tiles. So obviously it's not advisable and that there will be additional cost to it. So uh, we actually got the PD door to directly install it on our door frame. Yep, so this is how the door looks uh, like from afar. So this design that we get, right, is actually like a half-half. So the top half is like this uh, translucent material and then at the bottom we have this uh, lovey. Yeah, correct. You can actually choose like how thick you want this to be. They have like a few different NM that you can choose from. So yeah, you can go and check them out. And last but not least is of course to plan for the lighting in your bathroom. So for us, it's very simple. We get this ceiling light here. Yeah, it's a square one, like right smack in the middle of our bathroom. So let me on it. Yeah, oh, it looks really bright. So uh, let me try to change my angle. Okay, it looks too bright. Okay, so basically it's just a very simple uh, ceiling light here, nothing fancy. In the master bathroom, we also added this uh, LED light strip um, underneath our mirror cabinet. Yeah, so this is really uh, nice to have because honestly, we don't own it as much. Uh, for bathroom, I would really suggest you guys to keep the lighting simple. Um, this light will be good enough to lit up the entire area. But uh, you can have this you know, to add some ambience, like a warm light. So this is how it looked like without the ceiling light. Yeah, so it gives off like this uh, very nice like hotel kind of vibe. So for our common bathroom, we only have one light here, a ceiling light. Yeah, there's no other lights here. So let me just on it. Yeah, it lifts up the entire bathroom nicely. Yeah, it's really sufficient enough. Um, in fact, there was another lighting point here that you can actually have like a pendant light or another light for this vanity area but we got our ID to remove it because we felt that it was not necessary so we stood it up and got it covered 